Welcome back to Raptor Innovation. Today, we're gonna to show you how to reshim a pier in your foundation. Now let's take a look at what the problem is to start with. The problem is they used uh, some wood that is being compressed into the pier by the weight of the building, or at least it should be carrying weight. Um, this one is particularly strange as there's actually no load on it really, uh, which is about as bad of a, it could be. So um, we'll show you how to properly fix the next one, but we're gonna go ahead and take care of this one now. Okay, so this one's more typical of uh, what we see for a bad shimmy on a pier. Uh, what we have here are these shims are made of, I believe, particle board, which <laughs> compresses easily, especially under a house. So what we're gonna do is take the pressure off of this shim with our handy dandy jack. What we use, on this home here is a 12 ton jack, which is gonna be good for almost every home you're working on. Um, we do have a 20 ton one that comes out and we really need it, but this is a two story home and this 12 ton is gonna be doing just fine. So, Angie over here finding ourselves in a nice level place to put our jack on the base of our pier here. There we go. Yay. So when you're using your jack, what you need to do is put a plate of steel on top of your jack. Otherwise, the top of the jack is actually gonna shove, it, shove, shove itself right up into the bottom of your joist, or for us, our main beam. So we have a quarter inch piece of steel that we use. And now, slowly jack. We just need to take the pressure off of those shims. Yep. Uh, something else to look for is some of the shims are nailed, some of them aren't in this house. Mm -hmm. Most people will have nailed them before. Yeah. So if you're jacking it up and you're not getting pressure released, um, it could just be being held off by a nail. Yeah. There we go. Two jacks is all it took to get enough pressure off of this thing here. And like Andy said, we got a nail to cut through. Okay. Yeah, so see. So I'll let him tap and I might just jack ever so slightly we can't get it moving. Yep, a little bit more pressure off. Ta -da. Oh, there's another oh, one on the back nail. side. Yep. This one. Oh, there's, a, there's two more nails. Wow. Now, what are we using for our shims? Our shims are a combination of three diff four different products, technically. Yeah, so, that's true. Yeah. But um, I'll start with uh, this is a Vantec. Uh, usually used for subflooring. Yes. And then there's also our zip system board. Mm hmm. And then for our fine tuning, we have a, what is that? I think it's an eighth inch sheet metal. Yep. And then a 22 gauge piece of sheet metal. Nope. 16? 16. Yeah. 16 gauge piece of sheet metal. And the thing is, they're all cut in to six by six inch squares. Because what you want to do is actually get the largest amount of surface area you can underneath this. Because if you do something like I did before here with the really tiny shims, what they're going to do is not distribute the weight enough. And they're going to start shoving themselves actually up into the beam. So the bigger you can have for your new shims, the better off you are. For us, we're limited by the size of the piers, so that's why we're going six by six. But if you had 12 inch piers, then man, do 12 by 12 inches. So now we shim it. Uh, last thing real quick. Nope. Why are we using a, a Vantec and this style board and not a two by four? Ah, good question. So we use a Vantec over, um, I guess, dimensional lumber because this is a man-made product, which is already made by taking wood, shavings, mixing with resin, 
and compressing it under a lot of heat and a lot of pressure to get it into a solid state like this. So unlike our normal pieces of uh, dimensional lumber, a Vantec has a much higher compression rating than a two x four or a one x four or whatever else you might be using. So that's why Vantec is a winner. Good question, Andy. So now it was John. <laughs> what are we doing next? Next up, we build our shims. So when you figure out how many shims we need, we know we need at least that many. So we have maybe a green one. Yeah. Yep. So we always glue and screw our shims together before we put them in there. Because what you don't want to happen is if you have them not glued and screwed, over time, they could rotate or spin or slide between one another. So we use a little bit of glue and a couple of screws to hold them together. in there and don't want to hold your hammer like a monkey <laughs> uh, there's nothing guy. wrong with that comment somebody commented that on one of our videos so don't take any of that the wrong way oh man i hope that guy's still watching these videos that'd be great i hope it was like your dad trolling you it's not though he's a real guy right my father's yeah. real <laughs> let's see the skinny piece let's see that thing gonna get in there Oof. Let's see, will it, will it fit? There we go. It's shimmed, it's tight, so now slowly lower your jack. Don't just drop it, be gentle. I think because we had, it was so tight, we don't have much movement here, but there we go. <laughs> It's reshimmed with non-compressible material and a metal shim on top. If you have any questions about shimming, about uh, how could there possibly be a floating pier in a home, then leave that comment, leave that question down below. And once again, if you have any other, um, like, how did we get here, John? Like, what was the, how do we wind up in somebody's crawl space? How would they know this is going on? Symptoms of smushed pier, pier, smushed pier shims. Yep. Well, for this home, they had drywall cracking kind of most all over their home, which was a good sign that all the shims were sinking. And then also, this is a two-story home. The doors on the second story of the home were not actually shutting all the way. Like, they would either hit on top or they wouldn't latch. When they were being shut so that's all signs that your home geometry is all slightly shifting and you don't need a very large uh compression down here to equal a large shift up on a second story above it yep and i think i have a little bit of that in my even single story home so yep it doesn't need to be a two-story so if you see some cracking uh, this is a pretty simple fix because if you keep fixing the cracks and not fixing the piers they'll keep coming back that is correct so like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel because we put videos out every so often. And hopefully they're helpful. And if they're not helpful, tell us in the comment section below how they can become more helpful. Also, if this video makes it out today, be kind to the person you love in your life and um, happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. So love you wives. Love you wives. Separate wives. Glad you clarified.